Well, Bwana Sifiwe, you told your neighbor you love them. Did they tell, them, tell you your, their names? Now turn to them and ask them, by the way, I still love you, but what is your name? <laughs> At least get to know one new person today. Tell them, you know, I still love you in the Lord, but what's your name? Amen. Buona Yesu Asifiwe. So excited to be here this morning and to be alive. It's a privilege to be alive. Hallelujah. It's not a right to be alive. And I want to take this opportunity to thank God for our bishop and mom. They are in the house this morning. So we celebrate them. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. For an opportunity to share the word of God. And I want to bless the Lord also for giving us a chance that we are breathing, that we are well, that we are sane, Bona Sifiwe. Because in the current dispensation, to be mentally sober is a privilege. Bona Sifiwe. It is a privilege. Also, want to thank God for my husband and my entire family for being my supporter number one. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we want to look at a topic, the anointing for threshing mountains. Tell your neighbor, anointing for threshing mountains. Hallelujah. We started on Wednesday because this is the year of threshing mountains. So we started on Wednesday and uh, we will be winding up today. And for those who are not here on Wednesday, we will do a recap but I want to tell you something. Wednesday kuna kuwaga kunoma. Ambia jirani yako, Wednesday ni kunoma. Ambia uyo mwingine, Wednesday kuna kuwaga kunoma. And so we want to make welcome every person here who can find their way here on Wednesdays. Or you can find your way online. If kabisa you cannot come, just find your way online so that we can go through the word of the Lord together. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Samuel arose and went to Ramah after anointing David. After anointing David. And we are learning this because next week on the 18th, we will have an anointing service. And Bishop will be anointing us. Buona Sifiwe. So that as we finish the prayer and fasting, we will be equipped to go and thresh all the mountains in our lives. The scripture that we've just read talks about Samuel having anointed David. And this was a time when God had rejected Saul and was looking out for himself a man who would take the place of Saul. Why? Because Saul had walked in rebellion. How I pray this morning that none of us will walk in rebellion. Buona Sifiwe. I'm praying that God will not look for somebody to fill my space or to fill your space because we have walked in rebellion. We could walk in rebellion in various areas. But my prayer today is that God will help us to walk in obedience to him so that he does not seek for anyone to replace us in our place of jurisdiction. And... He went, he was sent to the house of Jesse, and Jesse had many sons, but there was this specific son who was the least, and he was in the wilderness, as it were, he was taking care of sheep. And when you look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, when now David has been anointed, and he's been called by the father to go and take some food supplies to the brothers, and one of the brothers, I think he was the firstborn, Eliab, is asking David, who have you left with a few sheep? So that brings into my mind that even the sheep that he was taking care of were few sheep. 
In other words, he was not the kind of a person whom anybody thought would amount to anything. And so Samuel has gone into the house of Jesse and all the other sons have come walking. Maybe they were bodybuilders and they had six pack. Bonus if you were. They had muscles as they walked, you know. And so as the first one walked all muscular and, David, and, and Samuel looked at him. This was Eliab. And Samuel is thinking this must be the, the king. Because in most cases, man, man looks at the outward appearance. But after all of them had walked with all their figures and structures and everything, the Lord said there is none among them. And as Samuel, I mean Samuel, after the Lord spoke, spoke to him, Samuel goes back to Jesse and he's asking Jesse, is there another son? Do you have another son? And Jesse reluctantly says, there is one in the wilderness. He's taking care of sheep. I'm praying that even as we will be receiving that anointing next week, that yes, you have been in a place of hiding, in a place where nobody has ever identified where you are. Nobody ever thinks anything good can come out of you. Just like Jesse and the family thought the best thing that David would do was to take care of the sheep in the wilderness. My prayer is that after the anointing that we will have received next week, that the Lord will come through for you and he will cause people to come fetching for you in that wilderness where you have been. And so what is anointing? What is the definition of anointing? To anoint is to consecrate. This one I'm doing a recap. To consecrate or make sacred. To dedicate to God in a ceremony that includes sprinkling with holy oil. That is to anoint. Other dictionaries say that to anoint is to smear or to rub with oil. But I looked at that one and I thought it was very scanty. To smear or to rub with oil. Why did I think it was scanty? Because even you and I this morning, as we woke up, we went into the bathroom. When we came back, we smeared some oil on our faces and our feet. Amasio, can we say you anointed yourself? You did not anoint yourself. So it is where a person who is of a higher grace comes and rubs oil on you and makes declarations in a religious ceremony. That's what we call anointing. Now anointing, like we said, is a system of authorization that allows us to function in our offices. It's a system of authorization. Anointing to anoint is to legitimize our operation. Like in this year, we have been charged to go and thresh mountains. That is the charge that the Lord has released upon our lives through his prophets. The year of threshing mountains. Now for us to be able to operate in the threshing of mountains. In other words, for us to be able to uh, be called mountain threshers, we will need an anointing that will be able to legitimize our operation as mountain threshers. And so that is what we looked at anointing, what it was. We looked at um, looking at, uh, that was on Wednesday, we checked at what anointing does and we discovered that anointing makes a difference in our lives. It is the anointing that transformed David into a simple shepherd boy taking care of few sheep and translated him into a king. It is the anointing that transformed David from a small boy who was just playing with slings in the wilderness. You know, when you're taking care of sheep, as they're eating the grass and drinking, many times they get bored as a shepherd. So as boys, they used to have those slings which they would use for hunting birds. 
in Kenya, maybe slings were not really, really very popular, but we had what we used to call fair. Tunajua fair. Mm-hmm. So it is an equivalent of fair. And when a young boy would be in the wilderness, those who have ever done shepherding here will attest to this. When you are bored, you can decide you're going to start hunting for birds. So this anointing transformed David from a simple boy who was using the fair into a giant killer. And so anointing makes a difference in our lives. We further went on and looked at three types of anointing. We looked at the saturating anointing. We looked at the fresh anointing. And we looked at the anointing of wisdom and favor. Hallelujah. Anointing of wisdom and favor. And now, today we want to look at different levels of anointing. But before we get there, I'd like us to read a scripture that for me is very key for this lesson. And this is 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, and we will read it together. Mm -hmm. Can we read together one to go? But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Can we rudia it again? One, two, go. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Now look at your neighbor and read it out to them. (laughs) But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Now scripture there does not say that you know some things. It does not say that you only know things that pertain to your career, does it? It says you know all things. In other words, the anointing causes the Lord to give you a quickening so that you can be able to know all things. I normally tell my son when he has hit a snag and uh, he, he's a coder. And he's coding a system or coding an app. And it gets to a place he has, he has really looked at that screen and nothing is adding up. There are so many errors. And normally tell him, do this. Put your computer off now. And get into the presence of God. Pray, then sleep. The Lord will speak to you the next course of action. Because the Lord is the master coder. Hallelujah. He coded your mind and my mind. Our minds are way higher than the computers. And so when the Bible says that you have been anointed by the Holy One and you know all things. That time when you are kind of troubled about something in the office, about something in your family, about something in the nation, about whatever it is, that is the moment to go back to the Lord so that you can activate that anointing with which you've been anointed and God can be able to bring out that knowledge that he's deposited in you because you know all things. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you know all things. We want to look today at the different levels of anointing and then we will wind up very quickly with the benefits of anointing. Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 3 to 5. Ezekiel 47. Verse 3 to 5. This is a time when... uh, Ezekiel was taken by the Spirit. Think it is summer. And he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankle. Oh, Ishakuja. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hands, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. And the waters came up to my ankles. Verse 4. 
Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through, and the water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Now, now, the anointing comes in levels, and this is just an illustration. It comes in levels, and this is Ezekiel who was given a vision, and he begins to describe what was going on, and he talks about the first level after this man came and measured the water, and he brought Ezekiel into the water, and as Ezekiel walked into the water, the Bible says that the water was getting to the ankle. Bwana Sifiri. Now, that is water that does not scare anyone. And especially those people who fear the big waters. Bonesu Asifiwe. It doesn't scare anyone. And when we look at it spiritually, this is a level which we call the ankle level. It's a level where we have entered into the presence of God. We have entered into the supernatural, but 99% or 90 or 90% of our lives is still outside the supernatural level. We are born again. We love the Lord, but we have not yet pressed in to a level where our entire being has ceased to be and it is Christ who is operating in us. The Bible says in the book of Galatians that it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ lives in me. So yes, we are born again. Yes, we are coming to church, but when we are ankle deep, we can only experience 10% of what the Lord has availed to us. That is level number one. Then we have level number two, which we call the knee level. When you're operating at the knee level, you have gone deeper in the supernatural. You are not the same as the person who is at the ankle. You are operating in the supernatural, but you're only 75%, I mean, 70, you're only 25% inside, 25, uh, 75% of you is still not yet in Christ. The Bible says that he brought Ezekiel again, and he was covered up to his loins. And when you're at the loins, only 50% has been covered in the presence of the Lord. You are still 50% away from the supernatural. Ultimately, we have the swimming level, a place where now you are able to swim in the supernatural, a place where now threshing mountains are not a problem, a place where now you're communing with the Lord, a place where now you have given him your all in all. Bona is a few. Ask your neighbor, which level do you want to operate in? Now, the level of anointing must increase from day to day. I know our bishop will anoint us. And I know we have been anointed in the past. But it is not enough just to receive the anointing and go back and sit at home without communing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Bonasifiri. After you have received the anointing, that is the moment you're going to tell God, I want fellowship with you on a day-to-day -day basis. You tarry in the place of prayer, whether the church has called for a prayer and fasting or not. You get to a level of worshiping God, whether there is a worship team to lead you or not, because worship is not music, it goes beyond music. You get to a level where the Bible, you are able to read it on a daily basis and you're asking the Holy Spirit, won't you interpret this word for me? In other words, you are not always coming to church with the Bible and by the time you go back to the house, you put it in the shelf only to pick it again on Sunday. 
Mbona asifiwe? Now that is what will move us from the place of being ankle deep to a place where we are knee high to another place where we are up to the loins and finally to a place where we are swimming in the supernatural. Because I want to bring it to you. What the Lord has availed to us is so much we have not even been able to exploit 5%. I remember we used to have a a pastor here who used to say that when we get to heaven, we will shed tears and the Lord will wipe our tears. Not because we will be crying about anything else, but it's because we will be taken round and we will be seeing the things that we were entitled to that we never were able to get. So there's so much that has been availed to us. Scripture says in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10b that I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. What is your definition of abundance? Have you reached the point of abundance? It is abundance spiritually. It is abundance financially. It is abundance socially. It is abundance. That is what Christ came to do. That was his vision statement. And it's until you and I get to a level where we are operating in his abundance, the vision is still yet to be accomplished. And remember, Jesus already finished because when he was exiting, he said, it is finished. We are not expecting him to come again and die on the cross so that your abundance can come. No, he already released it to us. But for us to be able to acquire it, then we must be willing to walk in the Lord or in his anointing at the level of swimming. Praise the name of the Lord. It's only at the swimming level that the waters of the river begin the fantastic effect on us. I don't like swimming much. So you normally find me at the shores of the ocean. But by the time we are coming from the ocean, I have all the sand all the leaves, all the everything. Because at the shores, that is where you find all those trash that has been swept from the ocean. At the spiritual shore is where we find all the trash that has been swept to the shore. And so if we want the best of the Lord in the spiritual realm, then we must go deeper. And when I'm talking about deeper, it is not the deeper that I normally hear some people saying. Uh -uh. It is not deeper that you're going to get another revelation outside there. We are talking deeper from the word of God that we know. Not anything extra that has been brought, I don't know, from Nigeria or from where. No, just the word of God. We must be willing to go deeper. At the swimming level, everything about us is covered in the supernatural. Our teaching, if you're a teacher, it is covered in the supernatural. Our preaching, if you're a preacher, our businesses, our decisions, our meetings, our businesses, our singing, our parenting is covered in the supernatural. Jesus was swimming in the anointing and the supernatural. And scripture says in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, we can read that. <coughs> Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Now, Jesus was the son of God, but he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. How I pray that as the anointing will be going forth, we will receive both the Holy Spirit and power. We will move from the level of just speaking in tongues to a level of being able to acquire that which the Holy Spirit comes with. What are the benefits of the anointing? I'll go through them very fast. Number one, the anointing will help us locate our missing blessings in life. The anointing will help us locate our missing blessings in life. It's until, you can get that from 1 Samuel chapter 10. Just read from the, the entire chapter, chapter 10. It was until Saul, who had been sent to look for the father's donkeys, it was until Samuel anointed him that when we look at 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2, maybe we can check on that. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2. Until the anointing that he was able to locate the missing blessings. When you leave me today, this is Samuel talking to, to Saul. When you leave me today, you will meet two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelza on the border of Benjamin. They will say to you, the donkeys you set out to look for have been found. And now your father has stopped thinking about them and is worried about you. He's asking, what shall I do about my son? The donkeys that were lost were found, but it was until he passed by the seer's house and he was anointed. We don't need to go and look for a seer outside there. We don't need to go and look for a prophet outside there from another nation. We have a prophet in this house. We have a prophet where? In this house. And as he will be releasing the anointing to us, those blessings that have been elusive in your life, those blessings that you've been pursuing and looking for, may the Lord release them in your life in the name of Jesus. May you locate them in the name of Jesus. The anointing attracts resources and destiny help us to our lives. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 3. Are there resources you've been looking for? The Bible says. Then you will go on. Still Samuel is talking. The prophet is talking to Saul. And he's saying. Then you will go on from there. Until you reach the great tree of Tabor. Three men going up to worship. God at Bethel will meet you there. One will be carrying three young goats. Another, three loaves of bread, and another, a skin of wine, verse 4. They will greet you and offer you two loaves of bread, which you will accept from them. What are we seeing there? The anointing that Saul received from the prophet Samuel is now beginning to attract resources and destiny helpers in their lives. One has a few we have been looking for destiny helpers. We find ourselves in each and every meeting that is appearing in town. I want to announce to you today that all you need is the anointing from the prophet of the house. And resources will begin locating you. Destiny helpers will begin locating you. One as a few. Number three. The anointing empowers us and provokes us to act. It empowers us and provokes us to act. Number four, the anointing advances us and pushes us forward. You can still get that in 1 Samuel chapter 10. It uh, empowers us, it advances us, and it pushes us forward. Have you been stagnated? Have you been stagnated? The anointing will advance you 
and the anointing will push you forward. The anointing causes you to become another man or another woman. And I think that's what we are going to read. First Samuel chapter 10 verse 7. A different man. And af after that you will go. Okay. Once these signs are fulfilled, do whatever your hands find to do. Let's go back to the, the previous one that you had given us. Uh -huh. this, thank you. After that, you will go to Gibeah of God, where there is a Philistine outpost. As you approach the town, you'll meet a procession of prophets coming down from the high place with lyres, timbrels, pipes, and harps being played before them. And they will be prophesying, verse 6. The Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you and you will prophesy with them and you will be changed into a different person. Praise the name of the Lord. The anointing causes us to become a different person, a new person. In other words, you, you will still be looking in appearance the same, but right inside of you, things will have been transformed because now you will begin prophesying. And when we are talking about prophesying, we are not talking about those things that we normally see being done out there, the gymnastics, someone jumping and doing all those sorts. No, that's not what we are, say, what we are saying. We are saying you will begin speaking things and they will become even things in your own lives because you will become a prophet of your very own life. One has a theory. When I was growing up, I used to think for you to be a prophet, you have to roll and jump and do certain things. One has a theory. Now, that's not what I'm talking about. The anointing will also make you the head and not the tail. <coughs> it will make you the head and not the tail. The anointing will make you a commander and a leader. According to 1 Samuel 10.1. The anointing will raise your worship to God. And finally, the anointing will cause people to favor your cause. And we will read Psalms chapter 35, verse 27. May those who delight in my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, the Lord be exalted who delights in the well-being of his servant. So the anointing will cause people to favor your cause. People will be excited and delighted as the Lord is lifting you high. And as I finish, I want to bring it to us that the, all these things that we've talked about, all these benefits that we are talking about have to begin with you giving your life to Jesus Christ. If you come for the anointing and you're not born again, this is what will happen. You will come either, if it's your hands being anointed, you'll come with dry hands and you go with oily hands. That is all that will happen. If it is your head being anointed, you will come with a dry forehead and go back with a wet forehead and there is nothing that will happen in your life. But if you first and foremost establish the, your relationship with Jesus Christ so that you know him as Lord and Savior, then all these benefits that we are talking about will come because the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. So it begins with salvation. Hallelujah. And I just want us to rise up as we are praying. As we prepare for the anointing come Sunday. Oh, that you would call on the name of the Lord and tell him, Father, these are the areas that I want you to work in my life. And if you are not born again, today is the day that you can receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Just lift your voice and pray to the Lord as we wind up. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We want to bless your name. And we want to honor you. Because you're a good God. We thank you for your word, Abba Father. Oh God Almighty. For the promises that you have given to us. Jehovah God, we thank you for the benefits that come with the anointing that you release in our lives. Lord, we want to lift our voices to you now. And we want to pray that Jehovah God, even as we will be receiving the anointing, oh God, we pray, Jehovah God, that our lives are going to be transformed. We pray that, King in glory, you will empower us. You will release resources in our hands, our Father. Even in this dispensation, my Father, when resources have gone under, we pray that, Jehovah God, supernaturally, my Father, you will release the destiny, help us our way in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, Daddy, and we give you honor. You are there and you do not know the Lord as Savior of your lives. Or you were born again, but you drifted. Because of the hardships of life, you drifted. Because of the pleasures of life, you drifted. The altar is open this morning. You could just lift your hand and we will pray with you. So that as the anointing will be released, you can be a beneficiary of the same. Are you there? Are you there? Hallelujah. Father, we exalt your name and we thank you because you are good. We bless your name, Jehovah God, for the word that you've spoken to us. Jehovah God, may this word work in our lives and yield results in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate the Lord.